Hi everybody, this is Andre, and today we are going to talk about new Eurorack module that we are launching. So it's called Modder Pod, and this is the funniest ever project I've been working on because it gives me personally so much fun uh, doing something like this after I made it for production. And uh, let me quickly explain what it is. Basically, it's the Eurorack module. Uh, quite complex. Um, that's available as a kit. Uh, and uh, uh, it drives the uh, stepper motor, which is precision, high torque motor that you typically can find in the CNC routers, in the cutters, in the 3D printers, and other various stuff that you can later attach to any other hardware to control something else, to move your knob, to move your slider, or just to do some other creative pieces. We are going to show you some examples later, but that would be just a fun and a joy and uh, uh, to show you how it's operating. Anyway, um, what you can do with that? Uh, there are several operations mode, operation modes, uh, how it's working. First of all, it has inputs over classical MIDI. So that's a TRS, configurable TRS A or TRS B inputs. Uh, there is a CV gate control, so certain parameters you can control with CV gate, other parameters you can control with the MIDI. Uh, it has the display, but it doesn't have any buttons. And the reason for that, because all operations and all controls that you apply to this are going through the MIDI or USB as a standard note. So you press the uh, C key and it goes to the first mode. You press D key and it goes to the second mode. You press E and so forth and so forth. Uh, it makes it very simple to operate. Uh, you, can, you can connect it via the USB. You can connect it with MIDI. It doesn't really make the difference. Uh, you can also connect it with USB and everything that USB sends will go to the TRS outputs and vice versa. So it's a whole pass through that allows you to do some other creative configurations like having a MIDI, MIDI keyboard controlled or uh, at the same time having your door and controlling the exactly the same module. Uh, it can precisely mod move uh, its motor to the steps. And this is the main advantage of the uh, stepper motors that it's a precision operation. Uh, it doesn't have a feedback. So what does it mean? So it doesn't know its location. It's counting the location by counting the steps to move to that particular location. And that is the, well, probably the first that you need to remember how then you set up uh, as soon as you turn it off. It doesn't know your start position. So at the start, you you need to move it to the start, or you uh, just before powering it off, you move it to the zero position, and then everything will be great. So uh, you can power it from the Eurorack power for the main circuit. That is basically this is Tinsy operated controller. So you have a Tinsy board here. The firmware is open source. You can do any modifications you want, uh, but it requires a power. You can control it. You can power it from the USB or you can disable power from the USB and use the Eurorack power. For the motor power, because the motor can take up to the whole amp of the current, there is the external power. I'm still offering you the option to power it from the Eurorack if you're sure that you can provide sufficient one amp over the 12 volt Eurorack rail, but it's better probably and easier just to connect the external wall adapter for the 12 volt and then it would be controlling the motor only. So uh, that gives you lots of flexibilities how you can configure it, how you can power it. So don't mess with other Eurorack power buses, if especially when you have a limited and you have already many modules in your system. Anyway, uh, this is fun and this is joy and well, quite an easy to assemble. It's a complex model, model, but uh, there are not much parts here, and all parts are through hole parts. So, uh, well, if you have average soldering skills, that would be super easy. Now we are moving to our studio position, and I will show you how it's operating. Let's continue. So I now mounted motor port into the rack. So we have a rack here. We have the MIDI keyboard connected to it. So that's a simple Arturo key step keyboard with the MIDI output connected to the physical MIDI input onto the motherboard. I'm not using USB just to make it simple. 
but I have the uh, USB input connected to the Arturia, so all the commands that I might be sending for my DAW, they will go also to this external output. We will be using the DAW just to give you some examples how you can program it. Uh, so that's Cubase, obviously you can run it with absolutely any DAW that can send different MIDI control change messages and notes. Everybody can do that. Okay. So now let's take a look. Uh, it's currently powered for the motor power, so that's external power that I'm using here for a 12 volt, just to provide the power to the motor, but I can freely move it. So only the circuit is working, it's waiting for the Eurorack power, and it's currently connected to a 5 volt Eurorack power. So I turn it on, and it goes to the latest stage, to the last stage before I shut it down. You may see here that it's currently set in the follow MIDI mode. Basically, that means that uh, uh, that was the mode of operation that I used before. To remind you, there are three modes, follow MIDI mode, rotation mode, and balance mode. Follow MIDI just follows the position of the uh, CC1 uh, modulation controller. So I'm moving my finger here on the touch panel and it moves between the minimum and maximum location here that I set up in my configuration. I will show you briefly how you can configure it. Also keep in mind, because it's a stepper motor, it doesn't know its position. It can only count the steps it makes to the position. So say then from the, when you powered it on initially, it doesn't know where it sets to the zero position. So you have two choices, move it to the zero position before you powered it on or press the key called A1, that's here, and it disables the motor, so now you can freely move it. If I can go to the standard operation, to the follow MIDI mode, I can no longer move it, because motor is under power, and it holds its, its position. And basically, it's waiting the command that I can send here. Let me first show you the two simple modes, rot rotation and balance mode, and then we'll go back to the follow MIDI mode and quickly program it. So, to go to rotation mode, uh, we go to the D key, and basically we are currently in the rotation mode, and there are two, oh, I'm sorry, there is one parameter that we can send to this module, that is CC number three, which is assigned to this fourth potentiometer here, and it controls the rotation speed. Uh, then, in the middle position of the potentiometer, uh, it it not, doesn't move, and when I go to the lower half, it goes to the anti-clockwise. So clockwise, when I go to the upper half, all the way to the maximum position, that's the maximum position for this motor right now. It depends on the motor brand and it depends on the motor configuration, because there is always equation between the torque, maximum speed, and the cons well, consumed current. So I found this motor is the ideal for the most of applications, but it doesn't have the highest rotation speed, so there you have to choose. Okay, so that is the rotation. Uh, I can go to the bounce mode right now, so that is E1. And what bounce does, it basically, it bounces in between the lower bounce range and upper bounce range. And it's set up separately for this mode of operation, so it, it's not the same as the follow MIDI mode, it can be completely different parameters. And for this bounce mode, you can now control two parameters uh, during the real time. One is the bouncing speed, so that's the same CC3 controller. It can go fast or slow or fast. And we can also control the acceleration. Acceleration is how quickly it gets to the maximum speed, so uh, that creates some smoothing at the ends of the bounce range. Okay. All right, uh, now we go to the follow MIDI mode, to the basic mode of operation, and I will quickly show you how you can adjust parameters. So, of course, before doing that, you want to set it to the position number, well, to the zero position. The easiest way to do that, you just disable the power, you set it to the position, and now it, you enter to the follow MIDI mode, so that's your zero position at the moment. To enter to the programming mode, we go to the B1 key, and it shows on the screen, you see the screen is always scrolling. All your operations, they keep adding, and so you can see the history of all the operations, uh, what has been changed in what sequence. So we are currently in the programming mode, and programming mode is super simple. What you do in this mode, you control it with a pitch band. So pitch band briefly 
moves the potentiometer, I'm sorry, the motor, stepper motor into the direction uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise. Uh, depends how you move it pitch. It moves it slowly. The reason for that, you set up to the desired uh, state and then you press what corresponds to this state. The basic one, we press the C2 and it sets our zero position. So this is our zero position. Now we move it to our maximum position. Let's say our maximum position will be in two turns from the zero position. You see, I did that purposely because you can have multiple turns. And we press the C3 uh, key and now it sets to the maximum range. So we set the two most in common uh, well, configurations. We set it, we set zero and we set max. In between them, we can set up as many presets as we want within this uh, range of the octave. So we, again, we can move to the, uh, to something different, press the, I don't know, E key, and it sets us a preset number four. We can, again, we can move it a little bit more. We can do num preset number two and so on. So what it gives you later, that when you save the parameters by pressing the B key again, and go to the uh, follow MIDI mode, now you can move between uh, uh, zero range and maximum range. You see, it's two turns as we programmed exactly uh, that it's making, but it also can go to the presets that we assign to these part of the keyboard. So uh, that that would be one position that we did for the fourth and for the second that was somewhere. It's helpful when you have, for instance, when you attach it to the control some a rotary switch, for instance, and you want it go to the precise positions, or you want to attach it to some potentiometer, for the same reason you want to set it precisely for some, well, I don't know, or for some switch position, for instance. So that is that part. Exactly the same way you set up the bouncing range, where you do this. Again, refer to the manual. I'm not spending time here. I'm doing this really quickly to get you to, get you to the idea what you can do with that. So now, as we did some basic setup, and uh, and again, uh, let's use some toys to well to play with that and to show you how what actually you can attach to the to the end of this uh, stepper potentiometer stepper motor. So I'm using this um, flex cable. And what this flex cable does, we can now connect it to the potentiometer on some keyboard. So assume that this keyboard cannot be automated. That is basically perfect 10. It can be automated, it's Rev4. But for the sake of the, I don't know, demonstration, uh, I am removing the knob and I'm attaching this uh, flex cable and I lost my screw from this cable. So let's use something different. Uh, you got the idea, basically it's less cable, goes here, here. I tested before we started shooting the video and now I lost my screw. So probably means that I have to find a screw or, uh, no, that doesn't fit, uh, or buy another cable. Okay, keep going. What else you can do? Uh, I have several ideas for you, so, uh, you'll be really excited what you can do with that. This one doesn't work, uh, but we are not giving up. Um, we have our favorite model for Eurorack that we produced. That is our spinner. It works great, but uh, it's boring to spin it by the finger. So what we are going to do, we are going to mount it to Eurorack and spin it by our stepper motor. Let's do that quickly. Uh, right here. How we can connect this spinner to this motor? Easy. Uh, you just buy some tools from... Doesn't work again. Uh, from AliExpress. 
and in this case this intended for kids or intended for some RC cars this is a belt I think you you know what's going on right so now we set it Hmm. Looks interesting. What's going on? Our spinner is spinning. So we are in the constant rotation mode. We can go to the uh, bounce mode. And now our spinner is converted to the LFO that we can take and patch it to our modular synthesizer. So to protect to protect your ears from the ugly sounds and non-creative performance. I'm not going to do that, but you got the idea. You got the idea what can we do and how we can connect. So let's keep going and I have another idea for you. Now we remove our spinner and we will put some something else. So, you know, you can control a spinner. Good. Uh, please check spinners in our Tindy stores. That's the best spinner you can buy for sure. Uh, you know how you can control from this now to the potentiometer, so we are not going to talk. I lost my screw. I will spend days now to find my screws. Let's connect something else. I spent 20 minutes on my laser cutter and made this acrylic disc and made this just a piece of the acrylic. And what we are going to do with that, we are attaching it to our to our controller. And uh, that would be like this. And now we can attach it to the slider. Uh, what slider are we going to choose? We will choose the slider that's available for us. Uh, I think this one is good. Um, it's a bit too close. Uh, that's a bit too far. But let's pretend we will be moving it from here to there. Um, turn it on. And we can move it. Obviously, you can automate all of that. Anyway, uh, this was the most fun experience trying to do the demo in the real time. And hopefully you got the idea. And hopefully now you can be more creative than I am in this. But I've been already creative for you by making this module. So check it in the store. Uh, check our videos and uh, hope to see our customers.